Hello and welcome to On One Page. Today we are going to discuss simple linear regression. So I'm going to explain it in example in only one page here. So let's assume we have a simple data set which includes year of experience and salary, meaning that somebody with experience of 17 years will have a salary around 94 thousand US dollars let's say in one year somebody with 10 years of experience obviously we get uh, something like less than that which is in this case 73 thousand dollars per year so the question here I would like to answer is if we have somebody with you know 14 years of experience how much his salary will be this is a typical machine learning question in which we can utilize the historical data we have here in order to do prediction here, right? We're going to build the model that actually learned from here in order to know for somebody who has 14 years of experience what the salary would be, all right? So let's do this. Well, here we are going to use uh, uh, this formula, which is, I'm sure you have seen it before. In this case, y is the dependent variable here, which is in this case the salary. If somebody with, with um, uh, 14 years, in this case x, which is the independent variable here, how much the salary would be, given that somebody has an experience of 14 years? That's the question. But if you notice, we have two other variables to calculate here. The first is the y-intercept and the second is the slope or the gradient. Let's explain um, uh, this further more in this scatter uh, plot, plot here. All right, assume here your x-axis is the number of, uh, number of years of experience starting from zero year to 20 years, which covers our data here, the x uh, uh, attribute and then we have the corresponding salary here from 0 to 100,000 US dollars per year so let's say somebody with um, uh, 4 years of experience will get around 40,000 or something like that so if we have this regression line you could see here then we can easily see, for example, somebody with 10 years can get more likely to get something around um, uh, $60,000 per year. All right? So, for 14 years, we're looking for, you could see, something around uh, $75,000 a year. But how to get this regression line in the first place? That's the question. So, first of all, you notice a is right here, which is where the line is actually intersect with Y. And we have the slope here. So that means if I know where the line intersect, I can, I can move it up and down based on this slope until I find a best fit for all these data points. And th these data points are nothing but reflecting the data points we have here. This is our X and this is our Y. For example, 2 and 20, this is the one here. You can uh, straight away see this is the first point, which is 2 and 20, for example, and so forth. So the objective here is to find a line that minimizes the distance between the original data point and the predicted one. This is the predicted one here. Let's say for uh, this data point, this is the original one, and this is the predicted one. So, if we get the total distance here of each and every line we think of, we can get a line like this or a line like this, then the best line is the line minimizes the total distance here. Okay? So, in another word, the perfect line here will be a line which, in which all these data points are actually, you find it within the line here. This is the perfect line. Uh, um, you know, scenario we're looking for, or the perfect regression line uh, that we can have. 
Okay, so how to do this? Let's uh, uh, look on formulas on how we can actually calculate A and B because if we have these two, then the problem is solved. B basically is equal to R standard deviation of Y divided by st standard deviation of X. And R in this case, the correlation coefficient. But how to calculate R? So, R is equal to summation of X minus X bar, Y minus Y bar, for example, divided by the square root of X minus X bar square, also the summation of Y minus Y bar square. X bar is actually the average of X values. And Y bar is the average of Y values. Okay? So, once we already know the average, we can simply calculate all these values here. We're going to see how that uh, calculated. Also, I'm going to need, of course, the standard deviation of Y and X. And simply, for Y is equal to the summation of Y minus Y bar squared divided by N minus 1. And N here is the number of samples here, or examples, or in instance. In this case, we have 10. So, N here will be 10. So in order to substitute all these values here, we need first of all to calculate x minus x bar. This is x minus the mean, and we can simply get it here. This is the average value. So 17 minus 11.2, this is the first value. Similarly for the second x, third, and so forth. Similarly for y minus y bar. And then we multiply the two values together. Why? Because we need them here. The summation of the two multiplied. So we can multiply x minus x bar, y minus y bar, and get the summation. Okay? And because we need also x minus x bar square and y minus y bar square, we can also square the first value here and square the second value here, and we get the submission because we are going to need that. So I'm going to need these summations, and I'm going to need uh, these two averages. So, if you think of it, this is a straightforward uh, substitution, and I can get the value for B in this case. So R is equal to 990.8, which is this, right? Because this is the summation of X minus X bar, Y minus Y bar, this one. Get it here. This is the first value. And the root x minus x bar square, right here. So the summation. Multiply by y minus y bar square, right here. Right? And all under root, of course. This is will give us a value of 0.88. We can also simply calculate the standard deviation of x, which is x minus x bar here. 227.6 divided by 10 minus 1 in this case is equal to 9 and the root is equal to 5.55 and similarly we can calculate the standard deviation of y. Now I have all these three values I can calculate b and in this case b is equal to r and this is the value of r multiplied by the standard deviation of y divided by the standard deviation of x is equal to 3.56. So this is B. I need to calculate A, and A is very simple, is equal to Y bar minus B X bar. So that means once I calculated B, it's easy for me to get A, since Y bar is given here, and X bar is also given here. So simply, this will be the Y bar, this value, right? minus b, the value I've already obtained in here, multiply by the average of x. So 25.1 is the value for a. So now I have a and b, I can simply get the value for y. Because y, if you see it here, is equal to a plus b x. This is the value of a, this is the value of b, and this is x, our independent variable, which is 14 in this case. 
And you see for 14 years of experience, you get a salary close to $74,900 a year. But you, you can see it from here. If this line is cracked, then 14 will give you something close to 75 here, which is uh, makes sense. So based on this data set, we built uh, this formula and now we can uh, keep on changing the value of or uh, the value of uh, x, which is the number of years, the corresponding or the depending variable here, which is the salary, will be changed accordingly. Right? So in this case, I can uh, try any different number, let's say for 15, 16, 20 years, whatever, and I can see the reflection on y straight. Plus y, as we mentioned, is depending on the number of years. In this case, it's easy to use this formula, since we already have a and b, to calculate any kind of um, uh, salaries given the number of uh, years of experience. Thank you for watching. In our uh, follow-up uh, lecture, we're going to explore the idea of having more than one variable. In this case, you remember, we have only one variable of x. So if we have, let's say, two variables, what should we do? Thank you very much. Hope to see you soon.